All right, chapter 6.4 is similar triangles, and this is again split up into two parts, part one and part two. So similar polygons have the same shape but different size. Remember, we've talked about this all through the chapter. They have a same scale factor on all the sides. So just be clear on that, that the same scale factor is for similar polygons. Let's look at an example here. So here I have two triangles. If angle A, which is up here, is equal to angle E, which is over here, remember orientation is very important. So sometimes they're not always going to be drawn in the same orientation. And then it says in angle C, which is down here with the dot, is equal to angle F, which is over here with the dot. Then it says calculate the length of EF, which I've labeled X. When AB is equal to 11, so I look for AB, okay, there's AB, equal to 11. DE, which is on the smaller triangle, is equal to 7. And AC, which is that big long side, is equal to 13. So here I have to use my similar triangles ideas. And I have to think, okay, well, what's my ratio is going to be? All right, okay, so I start off with the bigger or the smaller. It doesn't matter which one. Um, I think usually we've been starting with the second one, so let's, let's keep that idea. So I'm going to start with 7, which is like which part here? Here is part seven. Okay, so angle or side DE is like side BA. So I have seven over eleven because I go from the small triangle to the big triangle is like so I say equal to, and I go back to the little triangle and I don't know that side length X, so I label it X over, and it's like that side thirteen on the big triangle. Just be clear um, how I got these two values. And then what do I do? Right, cross multiply. So I use my cross multiplication. I go 7 times 13. 7 times 13, which is 91, is equal to 11 times x, which is 11x. Now what do I do? Right, I divide. What do I divide by? The 91 or the 11? Right. The 11. So I divide by 11 on both sides. I get 91, whoops, 91 divided by 11, which is equal to 8.2, we'll go 8.3. So 8.3 is equal to, remember what happens to those two 11s? They cancel each other out, is equal to x. Am I done? Yeah. So that's my value for x, it's equal to 8.3. Does it make sense? Well, let's see, 7 is a little less than 11, so that means x should be a little less than 13. So 8.3 checks out okay. Let's go into the second example here. And again, these are all about orientation. I'm trying to show you different pictures that you might have. So here I have two triangles, but notice that they're actually drawn as one triangle. So what I've done is I've split them up into two. So I've said that angle E is equal to angle D, so that would be angle E is equal to angle D, so notice that I've drawn the big triangle over here. Let's just make that really clear. So the big triangle that's in purple is over here in purple. That's the big triangle. So I've taken that big triangle out, I've eliminated that middle line, and I've brought it over here. So D is there, C is over here, A is at the top. The little one that's on the inside, I'll do in green, that's A, B, E, and I've drawn it over here, A, B, E. Notice that B is there, E is there, and A is at the top again. So what are the two angles that are equal? Well, I have E and D. So I have E and D, E and D. I also have B and C. B is up here, which I put over here, and C is down there. So I have the dots and the little curved lines. It wants me to calculate the length of A, E, which is this one here, x, which I've labeled x over here, okay, and that's on the little triangle, a to e. And then it says ad is equal to 14, which is that big long side, so I go to my big triangle. Notice I've split it up into two. ad is the big long side, which is 14. ab is 12, so that's on this triangle, right, the green one. And ac is equal to 16, that's on my big triangle again, 16. So I don't know this value x over here, which is ae, that's what I'm trying to find. So I have to set up my ratios, right? First thing I always have to do. So I set up my ratios. I have 12 here is like 16 on my big one. So let's go 16 
over 12 is equal to, and I'm starting with the big triangle, so I go 14 over, right, x. Then what I do is I cross multiply again, right? 12 times 14, 12 times 14, 168 is equal to 16 times x, which is 16x. Then I divide by, again, the value in front of x. So I have to divide by 16 on both sides. So I have 168 divided by 16, which is equal to 10 and a half. 10.5 is equal to x. Does that make sense? Yeah, because it's a bit less than 14, like 16 to 12. Good, so it's all about orientation and splitting the diagram up. Last example here. Uh oh, now I have this weird looking diagram. If angle A, which is up here, is equal to angle E, which is down there, and angle B, which is over here, is equal to angle D, which is over here, it says calculate the length of CD, C to D, so that's that length there, we'll call that X. It says BC is equal to 8.5, so B to C, that's on this big one, is 8.5. AB is 12, that's again on my big triangle, which is 12. And DE, which is this one on the little triangle, is 5. So again, you just have to note that my X term over here is like my 8.5, and my 5 is like my 12. And then you can set up your ratio. So it doesn't matter which one's first and which one's second, really. Let's go with the x. So x over 8.5 is equal to 5 over 12. Then what do I do? Cross multiply. So I multiply the 8.5 times 5, 8.5 times 5, which is 42 and a half, is equal to x times 12, which is 12x. What do I divide by? Right, the value that's connected with the variable. So I divide both sides by 12. So I have 42 and a half divided by 12, which is equal to 3.5 is equal to x. Does that make sense? Yeah, because look at 12 and 5. There's quite a big difference there. So 8.5 and x should be quite a big difference as well. So just make sure orientation is very, very important in how to figure out what side is equivalent to the other side.